Hey, Foot Clan, it's always a good time to avoid the hustle and the bustle at the grocery store, not to mention the crowds. HelloFresh delivers everything you need to get dinner on the table directly to your door, contact-free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy, Jason, and a bear coming at you. It's been a while since we've had Jay Grizz in the studio. Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels a little bit nicer in here without, there's not an air of hair superiority in the room no, right like the, now. Right, Jay Gray is clearly hairier than uh, Mike, but doesn't hold it over us the right. way that Mike does. Correct, right. exactly. So, uh, Jason and I, Jay Grizz, we have it on lockdown today. This is a free agency show today, a lay of the land, if you will, and our predictions on where some of these free agents will go, which is always very exciting. Yeah, these things matter, and as football fans, we we want to know what's what's happening, and um, as fantasy players, this is really valuable to just keep in mind through this offseason as we go, like, who are all the free agents? W- which ones matter? Which ones do we expect to change teams or stay on the same teams, et cetera? And so the lay of the land will be given today. Yeah, and... It- it's always exciting when big names change teams. Last year, we saw DeAndre Hopkins with the trade go to Arizona. Then you start to, you know, get into the predicting and the, uh, you know, just our mindset changes to where we can see the best outcome for these players on their new teams. But it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes they take the money and they end up in a worse situation. Yeah, I would say historically, the majority of big free agent shifts are negative for fantasy. They, The players got paid a lot of money because they were already great. So usually, best case scenario is they stay great, uh, but they more often than not aren't don't live quite up to that expectation. So maybe that will end up a silver lining for some of the franchise player news that we have today. Yes, absolutely. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, uh, and I, I encourage you to do so. You can check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, player profiles up there, and get ready for your draft at ultimatedraftkit.com. Let's do some buy-sell, Jay. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, this is a franchise tag edition of Buy Sell, and we almost had this show on Tuesday. Yes. In fact, we were originally supposed, like our calendar, we've got a show calendar. We were going to do this show earlier this week. We made the decision. Last minute decision. Yeah. Based on kind of where the news was and what was going on to to kind of push it back a couple days and. Well, that was a good. De- that was a great decision, Andy. Yeah, the reason we did that is we knew that there would be some franchise tag decisions being made, and we didn't want to come on here and make a bunch of predictions that just fell flat. Now we will still do that part, oh, right? But let fewer, <laughs> fewer, because like we will no longer get Chris Godwin and Allen Robinson's destinations no. incorrect. Oh, that's true. The Buccaneers assigned the franchise tag to Chris Godwin. The Bears did the same to Allen Robinson. Godwin will end up being paid around $15.8 million. Allen Robinson, $18 million to stay in Chicago. Reaction, Jason? Um, My reaction is, Kenny Galladay is a free agent. All right. No franchise tag for Kenny G. Uh, The Detroit Lions let him know they're not going to place it on him, and he is officially a free agent. And now... Can you imagine how happy he is? Because like there were three big name wide receivers on the market. Oh, that's true. And now it's like Bella the ball. That's <laughs> right. You want me? You pay me. Oh, so smooth. Yeah, he's going to uh, make some money. Right. Well, he's Kenny G, after all. Um, for those of you like part of this show today, we'll we'll talk about some of the basics of this time period in the NFL. 
just so that you're up to speed, so that you understand what we're talking about. The franchise tag, you're probably familiar with it from a monetary perspective. Uh, it's a one-year deal. It guarantees the player the average of the top five highest paid players at their position or 120% of their previous year's salary, whichever is higher. So Which is why these two franchise tagged players are getting paid different amounts in Allen Robinson and, and Chris Godwin. Yeah, and so uh, you basically have until July 15th to sign franchise-tagged players to long-term deals. Is that accurate? That's right. So Allen Robinson, he's still hoping for a long-term deal. Chris Godwin, they, it's not a guarantee they're only on a one-year deal. Um, but I would say the majority of time when people are franchise-tagged, it ends up being a one-year deal unless the tag, like in Dak Prescott's right. situation, is being used – just really as a tool. Like Dak is technically franchised, but they came to agreement on a big new fatty contract. I feel like they took the franchise tag, like the paperwork, the legal paperwork, and they they all did it in pencil. You know right. what I mean? They're yeah. just like, yeah, we're going to go through the hoop here, but we knew where we're headed. Now, do you think that the one-year case will you know, be the case for Godwin and, and Robinson? Do you I think do. either one ends up with a long-term deal? I do not think either one ends up with a long-term deal by whatever that date is, July 15th. All right, so here's the buy-sell. Chris Godwin and Allen Robinson back where they were. Are they top 15 wide receivers in 2021? Okay. Now, are we taking this individually? Like a buy and sell on each? Or no. do they both have to be? Are they both top 15 <sighs> wide receivers? Because... Uh, <sighs> Look, it was a a down year for Godwin coming off of the breakout year in which he was arguably the best wide receiver in the game. Yes, it was. And injuries. I, I, would, I would credit most of it to injuries. The first half of the season, Godwin dealt with a ton of different injuries, missed several games. If you look from week nine on, at that point forward, he was just healthy, played the, the entire rest of the season. During that stretch, he was the wide receiver 14. So he's inside the top 15, you know, threshold we're arbitrarily coming up with. Um, Not that arbitrarily, because if you, if you look at both of these players, they tied each other with 13.2 fantasy points per game, which was exactly wide receiver 15. Oh, on a per game basis. So on a per game basis, Oof. this is very not arbitrary. Okay. So with Godwin, um, I feel like there is nowhere to go but up. I can't imagine him having a worse season next year. Now, that was pro points per game, you're saying. Obviously, he finished, I think, wide receiver 32 because he missed right, several games. Right, which I, you throw out due to injury. Yeah. Um, but I presume Antonio Brown will not be back and or Rob Gronkowski, at least one of them, just financially speaking. What about got the some, everlasting arm, though? When will that noodle up? Uh, from my understanding of the Never? definition of the word everlasting, oh, I, I believe see. that it will not dry up. And I'm sick of, I think it was like 16 years ago um, at this point now when I uh, predicted the end of oh, yeah. the Remember end that? of uh, the Patriots and Tom Brady. and uh, Right. That, fool me once. Just the Patriots. Though, That's right. Is how it panned out. Um, yeah. So I, I, you know, when I look at these two players, if I had to pick one to be better next year between them, I actually prefer Allen Robinson. Oh, as do I. I, uh, I did not expect that from you, though. Right, because I've I've been, over the last couple of years, the Allen Robinson um, uh, hater is the wrong word, uh, like the the speaker of truth, I believe, <laughs> is, is how I would call it. The, uh, the realist? The realist, uh, yes. The more, yeah, I, I we've had lots of debates about Allen Robinson because there's this aspect of his pure talent, which I think we all agree is, is outstanding. Top five, probably, in pure wide receiver talent. Yeah, I, think, I believe I think that. so. Uh, but then you know you've you've said a lot of his production has come due to insane target volume, and so there, you had made some arguments during the year that that maybe some of that value is exaggerated due to target volume, and if that changes, you know, I remember. Yeah, I well, remember the, the mean things you've said about <laughs> him that were based in fact. The 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 reality is once again he had over 150 targets, and I believe he's had four seasons now where he's played 16 games, all of them outside of the rookie season, over 150 targets. So he is – I mean, we we remember – what was it, 2012 when we nicknamed him um, – The Target Monster. The Target Monster. Yeah. Like, that was his official nickname. And I think that's – it's just stuck. 
And and the reality is he's had bad quarterback play. He's going to continue to have bad quarterback play. Um, no matter you know the, the Bears aren't the Bears aren't getting Russell Wilson. No, sorry, Chicago fans. It, okay, 102 receptions last year for Allen Robinson. 1,200 yeah. yards, okay, six touchdowns. He had 151 targets. He's getting paid $18 million. Do we think Robinson has it worse than he really does? Yeah. Yeah, We think we because he doesn't have it that bad. Because he's got it pretty good. 150 targets, you're the alpha. You in, I mean, 102 receptions and 1,250 yards, like, the fantasy I know he wants to win. Yeah, but the fantasy community just wants stats. And you think, okay, if he's top five. But how five, good can it get for him, really? Well, I mean, this is like the juju with Antonio Brown season. How good – put Allen Robinson on whatever team you want. Put him on Green Bay. Does it get better than 102 for 12.50 and 6? Probably not. He would need to be the alpha for a good quarterback. So really, here's the best case scenario. The best case scenario is the Bears someone, get a good quarterback. Exactly. The Bears get Russell Wilson or Deshaun <laughs> Watson or you know somehow they swing Nick one of these trades. <gasps> oh, Jake uh, Chris getting hype. Yeah, this is a lot of Bears talk. Um, yeah, but but speaking of Nick Foles, you know, right now you're like, oh, they don't even have a quarterback. We don't know who it's going to be. Nick Foles is under contract. Nick Foles is currently the starter, and if you actually look on a per game basis where Allen Robinson played the best, it was with Nick Foles. He was uh, had a higher target volume, yards, uh, same touchdown really? pace. He was better with Nick Foles. See, I felt better as an Allen Robinson manager late in the season when Mitch took the job back. Yeah, it's it was surprising when I looked that up today, but he averaged almost three. Is that three, in career or last year? No, just last season. He averaged almost three fantasy points more per game uh, with Nick Foles. Maybe that's just because when Nick Foles started games, you kind of knew – what the ceiling was going to be for that game. And he was still going to be the best receiver, but you weren't going to get something special. All right, buy or sell. I'm officially going to buy both as top 15. I will buy both as top 15 but, as well. But barely. I think, yeah, I think God wins the barely one. It is a great line. Jay Grizz is happy to hear you say that. All right. That barely. Was, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's a, to, it's better to explain he, the joke. Well, he's a bear. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank, thank you. Thank yeah. you. That was Buy or Sell brought to you by our friends at Pristine Auction. Use our code BALLERS when you go over to pristineauction.com and they'll give you $10 towards uh, any piece of sports memorabilia, pop culture But memorabilia. what if I wanted like uh, Michael Jordan signed awesome you know, yeah, poster? Yeah, you could, you could do that. Um, but if I signed up with BALLERS, would I get you would $10 get, off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. You are so smart. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, you mentioned it earlier. The Cowboys and Dak Prescott have agreed to a four-year deal worth up to $160 million, uh, tied with Patrick Mahomes for third highest um, compensation or completion percentage. <laughs> Not compensation. You can't tie with Patrick Mahomes in compensation. <laughs> no. Uh, this is a, an interesting deal for Dallas. It was one that had to happen. Four years is not a lot because the way these deals work is, you know, you you lock up Dak. You're not talking about it for what, two years? Right. But and then you're talking about it again. Well, and that was the biggest sticking point was ironic. It's so funny because he'll get they, paid were, again. they were franchise tagging him. And that was the big no-no because you want the big long-term deal. But ironically, one of the sticking points was that Dak didn't want a five-year deal. Dak wanted a four-year deal because he's smart and knows that the salary cap is only going to continue to go up over the next several years. Uh, he'll be a nice young age when uh, his contract is up, and he's going to get uh, a contract that makes this one look silly and dumb and small and stupid. All right, so Dak is the quarterback in Dallas. But that's is, great news. Yeah, it is great news. We all assumed it, but it's nice to have it happen. Uh, the rest of the stat that I confused with compensation for a moment was that he's tied with Patrick Mahomes for the third highest completion percentage for the first four plus years in the NFL. So uh, that's impressive. Kurt Warner in there, Deshaun Watson in there. A couple of veteran wide receivers have been released, Jason. Emmanuel Sanders, John Brown, both released by the Saints and the Bills. You're going to see a lot of this happening. We talked about it, the salary cap came in it is official it is lower than what it was last season that's the first time that it's 
gone by a lot down in I don't know forever. Has I mean, it ever gone it, down? It dropped from one hundred ninety eight point two million to one hundred eighty two point five million. Yeah, and so you're going to see a lot of players like this that are cap casualties. We've seen them already, Kyle Rudolph, and so Emmanuel Sanders, John Brown. Um, it's going to be a hard free agency market for them. Yeah, I would imagine it, someone the age of Emmanuel Sanders is probably done. Could be, unless he wants to go take a little one-year veteran deal someplace to try to win a championship. That's true. He could replace Antonio Brown. No, that is a that is a perfect situation like that. Add depth somewhere. Um, but you're right. You, you are going to see more of this, and it will provide opportunities for those players that are <laughs> – inexpensive, inexperienced, back behind these veterans. I mean, Gabriel Davis. Gabriel Davis. Uh, you can just say it. You don't even have to pretend to sneeze. That's that's solid. There's really no no reason for that. But go. Was that supposed to be secretive? Can, for like, can you trade for Gabriel Davis now, or is it? Of too course. Oh no, you can for sure. Okay, good. Yeah, he's done nothing really. Right. Then so I that's do, why I would do that. But uh, you know, Mike is not here today. Probably oodling. Adam Troutman pictures at his house. Emmanuel Sanders, who's going to catch the ball in New Orleans? Well, here's the three players we know it's not going to be. It's not going to be Emmanuel Sanders. It's not going to be Jared Cook. Yeah. Um, and who is the other tight end? They just Josh Hill. Uh, Josh Hill is not going to be him because right. they're not on the team anymore. So Adam Troutman is <laughs> looking like a more important piece of the offense. All right. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick does want to play again. We weren't sure if we'd have to say some final words about him moving on. There were some retirement rumors from John Clayton, but uh, he says he plans to play. Thank goodness. Yeah, we need him. It's good for America. Yeah. It's on <laughs> brand. Uh, I don't think that there's any other news that we should cover. The, the New England Patriots uh, picked up Trent Brown. For nothing. Right. For a fifth. Not even for a fifth round pick. For a fifth, seventh swap. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why every team out there needing uh, offensive tackle help is like, wait, wait, why didn't you maybe tell everybody that you were open to trade? Could have maybe gotten a little more. See what the market was. Uh, yeah, but it's going to be fun to look at uh, the entire market, see what team needs are and who's going where. Andy, I think I, think I will get it 100% correct. And you will get all of the picks that you say the same thing as me. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's how I think it's going to happen. But before we get to our free agency predictions, I want to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. We've all used them forever. You get fresh, fresh, uh -huh. pre-measured ingredients. Fresh. fresh. Soup's fresh. <laughs> uh, Mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Cuts down on waste. Makes it so easy. You skip the lines at the grocery store. It's fun. It's easy. You could cook as a family. And it's affordable. Uh, it's actually 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. And 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing the quality so you're getting high quality stuff here they offer 10 to 20 minute meals low prep recipes quick breakfasts and lunches perfect for the busy schedule and over 25 different recipes every week that you get to pick from you're going to love it it's great it makes uh, dinners easy different go to hellofresh.com slash footballers 12 use the code footballers 12 for 12 free meals including free shipping once again that's hellofresh.com slash footballers 12 use the code footballers 12 for 12 free meals including free shipping hellofresh america's number one meal kit free agent frenzy all right another thing that was requested Beyond the explanation of the franchise tag was maybe just giving a, a brief rundown on the various forms of and structures for offers in the offseason, Jason. You got the unrestricted free agents, the restricted free agents, the exclusive rights free agents, and basically you boil it down like this. Unrestricted free agents are free agents. That's what you think of when you think they're they're not under contract. Like Brooks. We let him sign with anybody. That's right. He's always available. Always available. Uh, but nobody can afford him. Right. Because he's a billionaire yeah um so an unrestricted free agent that means they're they're on the market a restricted free agent means the players can sign an offer sheet with another team but their current team can keep them on the roster by signing him to a restricted tender yep um and then an exclusive rights free agent is not one but that's the way i look at it's it. a free agent wink. wink yeah yeah it basically means they can be a free agent if the team wants to let him go right 
So they have no control. They're like as far away from what a free agent is as humanly possible, except for they've got the name exclusive right free agent. So it might make I think them the feel exclusive better. rights is is really attached to the team. The team has exclusive rights. That's right. Yeah, they have no rights. That's correct. Uh, and then when we say cap hit and dead money, what are we talking about there? So a cap hit's not necessarily what the player is being paid. It's what they count towards the cap that season. Dead money is guaranteed money left on a team. Like, they're not on the roster, but they're still counting against the cap. Um, there will be a lot of that going on. Like, for instance, Carson Wentz has a dead cap hit right now on uh, the Eagles, I believe, right? Yeah. for That's gross. Lots of money. Yeah. Uh, just a lay of the land here. I, I mentioned that the cap had changed this year. It will impact the money made in free agency as well as – uh, some of these releases that are going to happen to veterans and to players and restructuring and all of that. The top five teams, cap space-wise, Jacksonville number one, then New England, just barely behind Jacksonville. Uh, the Jets, the Colts, and the Bengals are the top five teams. And the uh, the bottom five, in debt, trying to figure out their way out of debt, getting to the cap number. Uh, the worst, the Rams right now, then the Saints, Eagles, Bears, and Chiefs. And most of the time, these teams do figure it out. They do figure it out, and they uh, maneuver their way the way that Drew Brees, um, even if he might retire, he restructured some things so that the team has cap flexibility. And then it'll happen after the uh, June 1st deadline, or is it July 1st? One of those, and then, um, you know, it'll move $11 million off of their cap space. So, the truth is we've done this for years and most every year I look at what teams have available cap space and think they're the only teams that can sign important players. And then all of a sudden a team that seems like they have no cap space signs an important player. It happens every year. I don't know how they do it. Voodoo, magic, and yeah. cheating um, is my guess. But, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're a fan of the Saints and you're like, oh, no, we're super under, uh, you know, we're, we have no cap room. You'll be able to do something. You'll figure it out. All right. A couple of important dates before we start the breakdown position by position. Monday the 15th, which is coming quickly. That is when the legal tampering period begins, which is when a lot of news is going to break because that is when teams are permitted to enter contract negotiations and you're going to have reports of signings. Yeah. I mean, usually over the last, the more recent years, that's the opening of free agency. Like, free agency doesn't officially open until that Wednesday, the 17th. That's when they can actually sign the paperwork. But really, I, I think it's it's going to be when the legal tampering period opens up. But but you can always be Frank Gord. Never Which forget. Which is to say, I'm going to sign with you when the league year starts, but then not do that. Right. Frank Gord was a Philadelphia Eagle during the legal tampering period. Uh, before he signed with the Colts, it was announced he agreed to terms and yada, yada. And then a couple of days later, he's like, eh, I think I want to go with the Colts. So, And then the league year starts two days later, officially. And that is when official signings will happen. And that is the 17th of March. And free agency is official at that point. All right. Most of our predictions are going to be in the running back, wide receiver, tight end department. Quick lay of the land, though, at the quarterback position. A lot of quarterback needy teams, also a draft in which I think there will be four first round quarterbacks drafted, maybe f I'd say five. Five. I would I would say there will be five drafted. I would say So that would be Lawrence, Wilson, Fields, Trey Lance. Yes. And then who's the fifth? Um uh, Trey Lance, Mac Jones. Yeah, so that there, it's that poss it's possible. There are teams that are in a position where they have a quarterback, but you're looking to the future, like Atlanta. Atlanta's in that department, and then you have teams: Carolina, Chicago, Denver, Jacksonville, New England, New Orleans could be looking to the future. The Jets. You have teams that 49ers. But yeah, I was gonna say they've got a quarterback and they hate them. Right. Like the 49ers, Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and obviously at the top of the draft, there's going to be – so, you know, it's like, okay, the Carolina Panthers are looking for a quarterback and, uh, you know, the the Bears are looking for a quarterback. Denver desperately needs one. There's there's not really a free agent market to, fi to fill the need. You've got James Winston. Yeah, we were talking Winston. about that at lunch today and didn't really feel like there was a free agent quarterback that would be sought after 
you'd rather draft somebody and save the money. Right, because the two main guys out there in free agency are Jameis Winston and Mitchell Trubisky. Now, Mitchell Trubisky is the worst and has <laughs> has truly solidified that he is not a franchise quarterback, and I'm not sure if he's better than Jameis Winston. So, personally, my love for Jameis Winston knows very few bounds that it's willing to stay behind. Um, I think would love to see him go to the Patriots and just for for science for science, for science <laughs> let, right. let's have Jameis Winston Tom Brady swap teams and see what happens but um the reality is those aren't players on the free agent market and they're going to cost a lot more than a rookie would that will guarantee fix anybody's franchise so most of the teams are looking to the draft or the trade area um, trying to get a Deshaun Watson or a Russell Wilson. Yeah, or or behind that, it could be a situation where a Derek Carr or a Jimmy Garoppolo become available based on what happens in the draft if they're cut. I will say this. We had a show five years ago that Al Borland found where the question was essentially pick a player in fantasy football and you have to have them on your roster for 10 straight years. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my answer was Russell Wilson. Andrew Luck's name came up in that discussion. Yeah, he retired, though. Jameis Winston's name came up by someone not named Mike and Andy. Um, or Jay Grizz. Oh, um, that narrows it down. Owl, you, you. Cam Newton's name had come up at the time. This was five years ago. But one thing that came out of that that was still interesting is that Cam Newton's younger than Russell Wilson. Do you, do you feel that? Isn't that an incredible... I mean, it just doesn't seem that way because we feel like Cam has come and gone. Yeah, Cam seems done, D-U-N, and, and that's because his his ability to throw the ball has gone away. He he hurt his shoulder. Um, he's had shoulder surgery, and, oh, it's not the shoulder, it's the foot. And Obviously, he's been dealing with a lot of injuries over the last couple of years, which is, you know, we, we all saw coming due to his play style. He is a Mack truck that's going out there and rushing for, you know, eight, nine hundred yards and plowing people over. It's it's hard to stay healthy through that. But when you watch him throw the ball now, he doesn't have it. Um, so he is technically a free agent. I can't imagine he's a solution for anybody either. Yeah, the 38-year-old Ryan Fitzpatrick is more of a solution. Yeah. I think my answer was Odell Beckham to the 10-year question, but I didn't. Yeah, I mean, you, you more. I don't like that. It was I was wrong. Yeah. You were you were exploring, yeah. You were exploring Jameis Winston. It's a, I mean, it, you know, I don't blame you. Kicking five the years tires ago, and, uh, you were kicking the tires. Yeah, I still, I still. Yeah, I know. I don't want to say it. I don't. Want, you can't make me say it. I believe. Yeah, you shouldn't. Uh, running backs. Let's talk about the running backs. Some cut candidates out there. Uh, one of them you're familiar with. Mm. You know, Gio Bernard's a cut candidate this mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. Also, this guy. Carry on, carry on. Really yeah, he's got one year remaining on his contract, but a dead cap of less than a million dollars. So he he could be a cut candidate. I don't think they need to cut him. I don't I don't think they're in a position where, um, and the, not say they 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 wouldn't, um, and I think it's going to be irrelevant. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. Uh. Restricted free agents, Philip Lindsay, Gus Edwards, Daryl Williams this year. Now, on Gus Edwards, Baltimore's come out and said, like, he's going to be part of this team, and he's restricted, so yeah. they're going to do whatever it takes to keep Gus. I don't imagine he'll go anywhere. And Broncos general manager George Patton confirmed the team plans to tender Philip Lindsay. Oh, really? I had yeah. not heard that yet. Yep, and then Daryl Williams, uh, they could clear $2.3 by releasing Damian Williams, which would match the 2.2 they need to tender Daryl Williams. That makes sense. They're a team in need of cap space. Yeah, but, I mean, I feel like they would just keep Damian Williams, the M Super Bowl MVP. No, I would not do that if I were them. Really? Yeah, Daryl's a better player, in my opinion, at this point. But we can, you know. I think they're, None they're of this matters. both very similar, and it doesn't matter. Let's get to the big names. All right. Let's start with the unrestricted free agents, and let's start with the big name, Aaron Jones. Uh, he's 26 years old. The team has told Aaron Jones that they're not going to franchise tag him. Therefore, they're going to see what happens in free agency, and it's going to be interesting because 
the cap has been reduced and spending big on running backs hasn't proven to be a worthwhile endeavor, whether it's Todd Gurley, whether Le'Veon it's Bell, Lev Bell, Melvin uh, Gordon. Yeah. I mean, a running back changing teams on a second contract has not been a good decision for the team signing the big money back. Can you think what's the most recent example of paying up for a back that that worked? Well, I guess you can't even argue CMC right now. You can't really argue Zeke. Yeah, I mean, at least those are same teams. I'm thinking someone that, that tried to go out and acquire a free agent to a different roster. Uh, you had Kenyon Drake in a trade go to Arizona and then get the franchise tender. But, yeah, it's it's not usually a good situation. And here's Aaron Jones, an incredibly important fantasy player. Um, yeah, and Sp uh, Spotrack has his contract projected to be four years, $50 million. We will share Mike's predictions as well as ours. I This is one I struggled with immensely. If you had seen our show, Doc, you would have seen me changing the team name back and forth on Aaron Jones between Green Bay extending him, mm -hmm. not franchising him, but extending him to an actual contract, or the Miami Dolphins, who everybody wants. It just feels like the puzzle pieces fit, right? Mutual interest, cap space, need, yeah, I mean, you just lay that was the lay of the land. You've got mutual interest, the money to do it, and the the a, the a team where it makes sense. You only need one team that wants to pay to take him away from Green Bay. I don't think Green Bay will sign him for his market value. I think they will sign him if the market is softer than they anticipated. Right. Which but means I think a team will come to the table, and I will officially declare Miami as the the team I think he'll land you on. have Miami I have the Dolphins okay <laughs> all um, right I think that that's where he's going although Mike's uh landing spot makes a lot of sense as well uh he has him going to the Atlanta Falcons um who obviously they went out and paid up for uh Todd Gurley it didn't work no uh, Todd Gurley didn't have it but Aaron Jones still has it and they could use uh, a running back you've got an incoming uh, head coach that's coming from Tennessee where the run game was so important. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that's interesting to me. But I, I do think that the Dolphins and the Packers are, are the leaders. Just to illustrate the value or talent of Aaron Jones, if you need it, uh, Bo Jackson, first four years in the league, number one in yards per carry, Nick Chubb, number two, Aaron Jones, number three. I talked about my breakdown and beliefs that I think you will get a good, solid RB1 season. Uh, from Aaron Jones in Miami, but I don't think that you're going to see his value increase in my mind. I, the touchdown totals have been outlandish in Green Bay. You don't carry the ball for 5.17 per carry going 300 times. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'd am I'm be okay with it. I mean, you'd be happy as a, a dynasty manager of Aaron Jones if he went to Miami because you know what's coming. Yeah, that's that's right. And you'd be even happier if somehow Miami was able to swing Deshaun Watson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chris Carson, unrestricted free agent, also told that he will not be getting a franchise tag from the Seattle Seahawks. To which, for the first time, a player said, dang it. <laughs> Usually it's like a negative right. when a player gets a franchise tag. That would I he mean, probably, why would he's they? He's ready for that. Yeah, he's like, oh, was, was that on the table? Give me that money. Uh, yeah, he only made like $2 million last year. Uh, why don't you give me your prediction first? Because Mike and I are the same. Um, so I have him going back to Seattle, similar to what you were going back and forth with with Green Bay. I, I don't think Softer there's a market. For I don't Chris think Carson. there's a market for Chris Carson. I don't think there's a big market for running backs because of the combination of running backs' value being questionable to NFL franchises and mixed with the salary cap going down. I don't know if a team's out there going to pay up for Chris Carson, and if they don't, Seattle would want him back. Um. That being said, he I mean, there there are teams out there that, that, that could make that happen. Obviously, you and Mike have him going somewhere else. Just throwing this out there for dynasty players. I would look to your waiver wire for Alex Collins because he is under contract with the Seattle Seahawks. They don't have an early round pick. You know, everyone's like, oh, what if Najee went to Seattle? They don't they don't have a pick for uh, Najee. And so Alex Collins uh, you know, we're talking waivers for dynasty. No, no, no. It's it's worth bringing the name up, and the, the team has shown that they're willing to kind of put retreads into place behind center, especially their own. Right. I, which is exactly is exactly what he is. Chris Carson. I went with 
Buffalo and Mike went with Buffalo. There are here's the market for for free agent running backs to me. It is a piece away type of a team. It's a team that needs a re- more reliable option at running back when they believe they're in a championship window. That is, and and then not spending the Aaron Jones kind of money. And that's what Carson represents to me. It's it's a solution for running back for this year. I don't know if it's beyond this year. He's a violent runner. He gets hurt. Uh, he's twenty six and a half years old. But this year. Chris Carson's a huge upgrade in Buffalo. Yeah, I I think he would be. Um, I mean, Zach Moss is playing football there, right? Now, and that's meant as an insult to <laughs> Zach Moss. <laughs> and it, it came across as one. Oh, fantastic! Kenyon Drake, another unrestricted free agent, twenty seven years old, made eight million dollars on the one year deal last year with Arizona. Doesn't feel like he's coming back to Arizona. At least we're we're out here in the valley. He's been really kind of resistant to talking about coming back, and there's not a lot of – I just don't think he's coming back here. Yeah, I mean, to start the early in the offseason, I did assume he would be re-signed. Steve Keim likes Kenyon Drake. Steve Keim likes whenever he is right on something. When he traded for Kenyon Drake, it worked out very well that season, which is why he got the franchise tender this last year. But you're right, there's been no buzz about it. Uh, the only buzz has been that they believe in Chase Edmonds. It, should he uh, need to be the guy, he could be the guy. And I, do, I don't think that will be true. I think that could be a negotiating tactic. But I have him leaving as well. I've got him, I've got him going to the New York Jets, who are a team that desperately needs a running back. And I think he could be a, you know, a, a two-year type of deal uh, to give them a running game. I don't know if they are – going to go back to the well of spinning up on a free agent running back, but maybe they won't have to spend up on him. That's I don't think this is a Lev Bell contract. Yeah, two years, $10 million bucks, maybe. Exactly. I, I'm disappointed in something, and that is Mike's absence from today's episode. Because of your answer here? Because oh, of my answer here. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It's Washington. The Washington but, football team. Yeah. But Andy. Oh, yes, voice of public opinion. But they have Antonio Gibson, the best running back of all time. And that's why it will hurt so much to Mike. I mean, that's why it will hurt. Look, teams don't view the same. They don't look at their depth charts through the fantasy football lens. They look at it through the lens of, look, we need to solidify the position. Antonio Gibson got banged up. Antonio Gibson is young. Kenyon Drake has experience. Uh, this is a situation where if it's not Kenyon Drake... I do believe Mike will cry this offseason. It might not be because of Kenyon. It'll be from something in the draft or one of these other free agent names, but you're not going into next season, I believe, with just Antonio Gibson. I don't. So Mike has him going to Houston, to the Texans. Kenyon Drake. Reuniting with David Johnson. Yeah, I just don't see that. Those two were such great teammates <laughs> back, back in Arizona. That would be awful. That would be terrible. I think... Now I'm I'm just gonna Mike isn't here to defend himself. I think he still thinks Bill O'Brien must be the general manager and makes bad decisions. Yeah, that's probably it. There are other names course, out there. To be fair, that that's a little insulting to Bill O'Brien because he's been gone for a while and they've been making terrible decisions. Yeah. So I apologize, Bill. It's in the water. Yeah. Uh James Connor's a free agent, Marlon Max a free agent, Leonard Fournette. These are those are names that will complement backfields. Um, none of them will get starter jobs. James Conner will be gone. I don't think the Steelers want them. Marlon Mack, I think, will re-sign with the Colts, uh, which will hurt all the Jonathan Taylor Thomas lovers out there. And then how about this? Let me just throw out one destination for Leonard Fournette. See, see what you think of it. Got it. James Conner's former team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who like a three-down back, like a you know, a, a strong big body can catch the ball. Sure. Uh, would you like that for fantasy? No. no, I wouldn't. If you had him on a, say a dynasty roster, would you be happy? Oh, okay. If he went to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Sure. All right. Me too. I mean, that is in the scale that is grading on the curve of Leonard Fournette destinations. That's right. It's an A, but it's a heavy curve, right? You've got it. Lev Bell's a free agent. Mike Davis, Todd Gurley. Oh, my gosh. Gurley's just 26, and doesn't he feel like 36? Yeah, I mean, these great young running backs, they – it's sad, man. It, it really is. It, mama, don't let your boy grow up to be a running back. <laughs> just don't do it. I mean, they get beat up, and yeah. 
You, you look at Hall of Fame running backs, like who are in the Hall of Fame, walking down the hallway. Yeah, and they they aren't walking very straight. And these were prime athletes, so it's uh, tough. It we, is. All right, let's talk wide receivers now. Um, lots of wide receiver needy teams. This is an exciting position for fantasy football players. This is where we talked about the aforementioned Kenny Galladay, right? Let's start with unrestricted free agent, not franchised, Kenny Galladay. Spotrack has a five-year, $92 million contract projection. projection. That will be what he he's going to be the highest paid uh, wide receiver, obviously, in this class. I have him going to the Baltimore Ravens, who still... As, that's the name that is associated with Galladay the most. Yeah, I mean, it, they're a team that obviously they, they spin up on Hollywood Brown, um, and they know, they recognize they need to get better at passing the ball. Now, I think this is more of a quarterback issue than a weapons issue, um, but obviously if you have Kenny Galladay and Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews, it's going to be easier to pass the ball. Well, he's, he's the kind of target that works well with Lamar Jackson. I mean, uh, Mark Andrews is a contested catch, uh, go-to receiver. Galladay is top five in those type of catches, goes up and gets the ball. Great red zone wide receiver. I get it. I saw some metrics on uh, tendencies of quarterbacks and teams where they throw the ball. And the NFL doesn't really throw across the middle between the between the numbers that often. The, mo the majority of passes are to the outside. The Ravens are like the opposite. They're so different than the rest of the Interior. NFL. They throw in the middle of the field, and you get that big body of Mark Andrews or, or Kenny Galladay uh, for those contested catches. It, w it would work for them. Uh, he led the NFL in 20-plus yard catches and end zone targets in 2019. So even though he was injured last year, let's not forget how great Kenny Galladay is. That being said, I'm going splashy with my prediction. I would hate it for fantasy. Though. I am going with the New England Patriots. Jason is struggling. That, that would be so gross. They have the most cap space in football, pretty much tied with uh, Jacksonville. They also are absolutely skill devoid. They, they have, just don't have skill players. Let's name their skill position players. Okay, are you ready? Begin. I'm. Hold on. I'm thinking. Um. I think you can say Nikhil Harry because of his draft capital. You could you could say his name. You're allowed. Uh, okay. By rule. Okay, by rule. And then you've got... Um, James White's a free agent. So if you were tempted... Uh, hold on. Just Would, wait. Just give me a minute. Any minute now. See where, see, see where I'm going? They don't have anybody. I don't think that uh, Bill Belichick wants the offense to happen this year the way it did last year. So I think that making the splash here on a player that is a bona fide superstar is going to happen. So I'm going to predict New England with the very splashy free agent signing, the unexpected free agent signing of Kenny G. That would be a lot of fun if Jameis Winston is throwing up the sure. ball there. Well, they're, they're going to have another quarterback. And and Mike has him going to the Bengals. Yes. Uh, so you've got T. Higgins there, but obviously A.J. Green, uh, I don't expect him to be resigned. Um, and he Kenny Galladay would be like, oh, you remember A.J. Green when he was great? Let's just sign modern day. New version. Kenny G. 2.0. Yeah. Juju Smith-Schuster. Unrestricted 24-year-old free agent wide receiver likely leaving Pittsburgh. Uh, Spotrack has a projection of five years, $80 million. Juju fits the bill of cashing in and not returning to Pittsburgh. I wanted so desperately for the sake of him for the team and for our producer Al Borland who is a Packers fan to put him on the Packers I think it would be phenomenal but as I went along through the rest of the free agents I just don't believe it would happen because the Packers don't usually spend up in free agency at that position he's going to he wants to get paid get paid so you know who pays yeah I do the New York Jets that's where I've got him going as well oh do you yeah we both have him going to the Jets uh, you know who else pays Las Vegas Sure, I could so see that's the another, that was It was a close contention for me there. Mike has the Dolphins making a splash with Juju. I could see that. They've got a lot of money. They makes need a lot of wide sense. receivers. Makes a lot of sense. I, I think he's going to ta take the big apple. You know, Juju's into sponsorships. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, his Twitch feed and his YouTube and all those things. I, I think the, 
the Big Apple will be appealing to him to go to New York. Yeah, or he'll take the uh, the tax benefits of Miami. Either one. All right, Will Fuller. What a year for Will Fuller. 27 years old in a month. It was a real juiced-up year for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it, though, because Spotrack has him projected for five years $85 million, which is a little bit more than Juju. And that's also a lot more than he would have been projected for prior to this juiced-up season. Right. Which, I mean, the stats were juiced. He was great. And um, I got Jacksonville on the list for Will Fuller. Getting Trevor Lawrence a new weapon? Yeah, he needs another. They need another skill player I'll, on the outside there. I'll Mike actually what. has Jacksonville as well. I, I mean, that would be a fun offense. You get, you get LaVisca Chenault. Oh, yeah. DJ Chark and Will Fuller. And uh, you okay. can do so. Yeah, that's James that's Robinson, not, that's Trevor not Lawrence. a bad offense uh, when it comes to the skill position players. Um, I have him going to the Washington football team. They are in desperate need of another pass catcher there. It's Terry McLaurin and nobody. Um, yeah. You know, they've got all these promising young guys. They're like, oh, there's some talent. But they need to actually go out and spend money on uh, a capable player. I think Will Fuller, if you look at the team, they've been going after speed. Right, like the the speed guys. That's what Terry McLaurin was. That's what Antonio Gibson is. I think they're going to target a speed guy in Will Fuller. Fifth most consistent wide receiver last year, Will Fuller, fourteen point seven points per game. Such an impressive year, juiced or not. Curtis Samuel. I see that you guys agree with my Washington football team need. Uh, yeah. Here. Yep. This was the wide receiver I chose to go to Washington. Uh, I've kind of had him pegged for the uh, Washington football team. Ron Rivera brings Curtis Samuel in. Versatile. Can use him. Speed. Yeah, speed. Can use him all over the field, different ways. Um, Four-year, $48 million contract. That's the Spocek projection. And, Jason, you have him going to the Raiders. The Raiders. When I, yeah, I mean, when you – there are certain teams that really, really, really target speed. Um, and you know, you, the, the, the chiefs have no money. Uh, Washington has money. The Raiders have, uh, enough money to make it work. Wide receiver 10 from week seven on. That's what Curtis Samuel ended up as last year. Tyreek Hill, Percy Harvin, Curtis Samuel, the only wide receivers with 2000 plus receiving yards and 450 plus rushing yards in the first four years of their career. It he does not seem it, his career has not seemed like worthy of what you just said. Yeah, I know. It's it's crazy. Corey Davis, unrestricted free agent, 26 years old, came to life last year. I've got the Raiders as that destination for Corey Davis. They love pl paying players that have shown some spice for about a year. I don't think Corey Davis is going to get paid well. I think he's going to end up, that, which is why I've got him going to the New England Patriots, because the Patriots, they don't pay a premium. They, they get... They want to make good financial decisions, get everybody at a value, and I think they'll grab Corey Davis at a value. And again, if we can illustrate the skill position players. Yeah, let's go through that list again. Okay. Give us a mo This is a moment of silence. This is just pouring one out is all this is. Yeah. I still don't think I agree with you on the Nikhil no, Harry. No, Nikhil Harry's awful. He's... He's uh, and I, I was a truther coming in. In rumors, he's being traded, right? Or he's on the trading block. Yeah, it makes sense. No takers. I don't know. I mean, I I feel like when you're that young and that highly touted, there have to be teams and general managers believe they that, can fix you that believed so much in the talent that they're saying, if I can get him, uh, you know, for pennies on the dollar, I should make that transaction. Some players aren't fits for New England too. Um. Mike has Arizona as the destination for Corey Davis. Okay. So, could okay. happen. Marvin Jones is the last free agent wide receiver we'll yeah. talk about. And this is why Juju Smith-Schuster did not end up on the Packers for me because there is not a better player in the NFL to fill in as a number two option for a touchdown throwing machine. Marvin Jones is perfect. I don't think he's going to cost too much. I think he would be a great addition to the offense, and I think he would thrive there um, with his big body red zone work. Big body red zone work. Thank, I got the thank you for repeating. I got Houston. the Texans. I have Houston. 
Uh, they they will have an absence at the wide receiver position. They already lost Hopkins, and they're going to lose Fuller. And I think Marvin Jones will come in on a brief two-year deal. Mike has him going to the Giants. The Giants really – That's uh, interesting. They're, they're be, a lot of people saying Galladay to the Giants. The Giants want a sp- – to make a splash at wide receiver they just let go of golden tate i don't know that marvin jones is a splash is a splash though okay some other names that will end up uh being signed cy hilton will likely find a new team antonio brown aj green is a free agent um yeah john brown like we talked about earlier nelson aguilar who was honestly like that's your steal nelson aguilar to the patriots that's your steal to me yeah i'm gonna take john ross to the Chiefs because they oh, want gosh. speed. They'll grab him and he'll be great. I, yeah, I think Nelson Aguilar, like I'd rather have him than Corey Davis. Interesting. If I, if I'm, is it just throwing it out there? All right, tight ends. Let's talk about some tight end predictions here on the show. Robert Tunyon is a restricted free agent um, in Green Bay. There are some cut candidates, Zach Ertz. We don't know where he'll end up. Jimmy Graham, O.J. Howard, Jack Doyle. Let's talk about the unrestricted free agent predictions here. Hunter Henry, 26 years old, going to the free agent market. Looks like Mike and I have him going to the same place. I think he will be the highest paid free agent tight end, and I think it will be Buffalo adding that more reliable, like the Austin Hooper to Cleveland edition last year. Yeah, I mean, Buffalo is ready to go. Buffalo has talked about needing to upgrade the position. I think we hoped for years it would be Dawson Knox, and he showed that the door is locked. It don't matter if you knock, it ain't. Oh, <laughs> I thought, see, I was looking for more of a Dawson's Creek joke there, oh. but you went with like Knox. Well, yeah, Knox yeah. on the door. Um, so I, I am I, the one who knocks. I get that, and, and Hunter Henry's not a terrible blocker, so uh, I think it would fit Buffalo and and what they do, and would be wise of them to go out and get him. Uh, I've got them going to the Colts. The Colts have a, tr- a trio of busted tight ends, and I think that with that system, with Carson Wentz and Frank Reich, they could utilize a really good one, and he would make sense. All right, we do have breaking news. The Ravens have given Gus Edwards a second-round tender. That makes sense. I, I think he's going to be staying put. <laughs> yeah, you go second-round level, and teams are not going to sign – Gus Edwards, and send a second rounder to the Ravens. All right, another free agent prediction here. Jonu Smith, Jonu Smith. I always say Jonu. I don't know why. It, it's well, old the habit. It's spelled. It it's looks old like, habit. Yeah. Jonu Smith, 25 years old. Four-year, $32 million projection. Uh, the Saints are my predicted destination for Johnny oh, Smith. Man. How do they figure it out? What? I don't know, but I, it just feels right. I wish Mike was here. I yeah, mean, I, I want him to hurt your too. Your Gibson, your Troutman hatred uh, is seething right now. Um, I've got the I've got the Seahawks. I think that the, um, you know, this is a team that obviously over the last couple of years, they've, they've looked at tight end. They've tried to fix it. They went and signed an older Greg Olson. Uh, Will Disley, Big Montana is, you know, he's dealt with the injuries, and John, who's, an, you know, he's a great athlete. Going to that team, I think he would do very, very well. All right, uh, Mike has the Colts for John, and that makes sense as well. Um, here's the last four years for Johnny Smith. Tight end 46, tight end 33, tight end 19, tight end 10. Oh, if these trends continue. <laughs> Gerald Everett's a free agent, Rob Gronkowski, Jared Cook back on the market. Is there anybody that's really interesting beyond those two big names? Um, from a fantasy impact perspective. From a fantasy impact perspective, no, not not unless something unexpected happens with Jordan Reed, who is still only thirty. Uh, thirty feels like uh, no re- forcibly retired needs to. Yeah, his thirty feels like Todd Gurley's twenty six. That's right. That's fair and accurate. All right, uh, Jay Grizz, you ready to wrap this thing up? Yeah, all right. He, he just, so impatient. Yeah, I feel like he's really got one tone. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Today, I look forward to being right about all my 
predictions. You know? Oh, well, then congratulations for having some of them be what I said. But if you think we're stupid, you can let us know on Twitter at the FF Ballers. In fact, Jason is at Jason FFL. You can let him know directly. Mm-hmm. I'm at Andy Holloway. And uh, Mike is at FF Hitman, the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Lots of articles hitting right now and a lot of exciting things coming your way in fantasy football. So that'll do it for today. Some more free agent frenzy next week when we get these reports. Monday's the tampering time. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.